Hey guys, so I'm doing this video today because recently I've been seeing a lot of posts on various platforms from fellow actors asking for advice and suggestions regarding self-taping. And uh, I've done a fair bit of self-taping myself. I've done a lot of research and I currently offer self-tape services for local actors. So I thought I'd do this video, explain my setup, my process, and maybe you'll find some of the information helpful. Now, self-taping was pretty popular and pretty common before the whole COVID-19 pandemic hit. And uh, now that the film and TV industry is starting to show signs of life, the consensus is that self-taping is going to be the norm, at least for the foreseeable future. Now, there's a lot to be said for the energy of going into the room. The beauty of self-taping is that it gives you more than one kick at the can, so you're able to submit your best performance. And a great performance will always be the key to a good self-tape. But if that performance is taped in a room with a cluttered, messy background, or harsh, uneven lighting, or echoey, crappy sound, that's going to distract the viewer from the performance. And if you can fix those things without spending a lot of money, why wouldn't you? Again, I'm not an expert, and I'm not talking best practices here. I'm just talking about what I use, and I'm hoping that this information will be helpful to you. Now, I've got a lot of ground to cover. I'll try and cover it as quickly as possible. Um, I will ask that you stick around till the end of the video and I'll show you two of my different setups and maybe that'll help you decide what equipment is best for you. Now, the first question everyone asks is what kind of camera they need. Long story short, a cell phone. I would wager that everybody watching this video probably has a cell phone and if you bought it in the last five or 10 years, it's probably got a camera that shoots in either true HD, if not 4K. And that's all you really need. If you're gonna use your cell phone, I would highly recommend that you download an app called Filmic Pro. It costs about 14 bucks, but the money is well spent. It gives you a ton of control and flexibility over your cell phone's camera. Now, you can find a lot of tutorials on YouTube about how to best use Filmic Pro. They can explain it way better than I can, but it allows you to do things like uh, set your focal point, uh, lock your uh, exposure, the brightness of your video, and also lock the white balance or the temperature of your video. It also allows you to set your aperture, your uh, resolution, and your frame rate. And the beauty of it is a lot of cell phone cameras don't allow for external microphones. With Filmic Pro, as soon as you plug in an external microphone, it will recognize it and offer that as an option. And you're going to want to use that because audio is important. Good audio is as important as, if not more important than, good video. It just is. And if you're using your cell phone, the cell phone's built-in microphone just won't cut it. It won't. Um, so you need an external microphone and there's two options. There's several options. Two simple ones are something like this. It's VideoMic Pro. Um, now you don't need a VideoMic Pro. These run two to three hundred dollars depending how you get them. Rode makes some uh, really good options that are under a hundred dollars. You can get the Video Micro for less than a hundred dollars. And there's lots of other brands that make equally as good external microphones. And with Filmic Pro, you plug them in and you're good to go. Now, another great option is the lav mic, a lavalier or a lapel mic. Now I've got a wireless setup, but you don't need that. On Amazon right now, you can find a good quality lav mic for about 35 bucks. It's got a 10 foot cable. You plug it right into your phone and it automatically increases the quality of the sound in your video. Now, you are going to need a way to mount all of this onto a tripod. When I was first starting out, these things were a little trickier to find. I had to source stuff out and I ended up using a couple of clamps and a couple of cold shoe mounts and some crazy glue. And I made a couple of my own mounts that I still use today. But if you look um, on Amazon, for example, or in your local retailer, you can find a, a product that will work perfectly fine for around 20 bucks. Now you're also going to need a tripod and there's a couple of very good options. You can either go with a traditional camera tripod. I found one that's very good quality for $35 and you can simply set it up, adjust your height, adjust the angle and you're good to go. Another great option is something like this, a Joby Gorillapod. Now these are great for home. You can set them on a shelf or you can wrap them around a, a floor lamp or put them on a bookcase or a high back chair and use them for a tripod at home, but they also fold up really nicely to take on the road. Now with regard to lighting, here there's a lot of options available. The simplest, cheapest solution is if you have a room that's quiet enough to tape in with good soft lighting from the outside, then 
that works just fine, provided you lock your exposure, lock your white balance. So if a cloud comes across, it doesn't change the light suddenly and uh, mess up your camera. Uh, but that will work good. Just make sure you don't have a whole lot of shadows. I'm dealing with a bit of shadow right now because I don't have my regular setup. I've taken a lot of it apart so that I can show you bits and pieces. I've got a couple of uh, box lights that I use and they're good, but they're pretty bulky. They take up a lot of space and you can find something that's a lot more compact for around the same money or less. Newer has LED lights with adjustable brightness and they come with stands and they're quite compact. Uh, you can get those for under $100. They used to be about $65, but prices are going up these days. Um, but those are a great option. Some people like to use ring lights. I don't know if they're the best to use, but if that works for you and you have one available, then just use that. Another option that I have is this uh, small wireless LED light from Aperture. It's rechargeable, has variable brightness, it's quite small and uh, transports easily. And when I have it at home, I will use it mounted back behind me as a hair light. Pretty much anything will work as long as you can get some sort of smooth, even lighting that makes you look good and doesn't throw a lot of harsh shadows. A very good option if you're on a budget is the, the traditional paper shaded lights from like Ikea. They're dirt cheap and they throw a really nice light. Now a backdrop is an area where you also have a lot of options ranging from rather expensive to virtually free. Now I've got this blue screen, green screen setup. I found it works for me because it's got the blue screen for auditions. You flip it over and it's got the green screen so you can do chroma key videos or if a client shows up and they're insisting that the blue shirt is the best option, then I can just quickly turn around to the green screen, we shoot against that so the client doesn't get lost in the background. Now, when I bought this, it was about $119. I see them advertised now for $199. Personally, I don't think they're worth the money. Now, another simple, affordable option that I found is this curtain. It's a neutral color. It's got a bit of a texture to it. It's got grommets, so all you need to have with you is a couple of tacks to hang it anywhere. Uh, it folds up, and it's very portable. It cost me 11 bucks. Now, of course, the free option will always be a bare wall. If you have a wall that doesn't have a bookshelf or pictures hanging on it, uh, just use that. Hopefully it's a neutral color, either a taupe, a light gray, an off-white, maybe a light blue. If not, you can always paint it whatever color you want. I mentioned that I would show you a couple of my different setups. Now this is my road setup. Um, I use the uh, Joby Gorillapod tripod. Uh, I plug my phone in with my Video Mic Pro microphone and I'm good to go. I also pack up the Aperture LED light, so I've got a light source with me no matter where I am. And the beauty of this is that it all breaks down and fits into a dollar store Tupperware container, which you can take with you anywhere. Now this is my home setup filmed with my crappy old cell phone camera. Uh, the $35 tripod, the cell phone, as well as the wireless lav mic setup on top. Um, you can see I'm using the Filmic Pro. Here is how you set and lock your focus. You can adjust and lock your exposure, and down here you lock your white. Okay, I think that's it. I think I covered off on everything that I'd planned to. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Um, I'll try and respond as quickly as possible, and if I don't have the answer for you, I'll try and find it. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please, by all means, do so. I'd appreciate it. Um, I've also included links to a lot of the products I discussed down below. Now, these are Amazon links, and I just want to say that I'm not advocating for Amazon. If you can find these products locally for a competitive price, by all means, shop locally. I've just learned over time that a lot of this stuff can be hard to find. Local retailers may not have it. They'll have to order it in, and it'll take weeks, or it's substantially more money. So if you can shop local, please do. I think that's it. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.